everyone! I'm Miss Mary Beth. I'm the Youth Services Librarian at Ingalls Memorial Library and Ringe. And I'm here today for story time! And I'm super excited because today's story time is our first one in our summer reading program. This year's summer reading program is really fun because the theme is Imagine Your Story. And that, that's pretty vague because it, anything you can imagine can be included in our summer reading. It can be anything from a fable to a folk tale to any, a fantasy story or a fairy tale. So I'm pretty excited because there are so many different ways we can go with it. We can read about dragons or we can read about Goldilocks and the Three Bears. All of them are in, included in Imagine Your Story. And this year's summer reading is different because it's all online. So we have, you can make your own Read Squared account, which you can find at ingleslibrary.com. And when you make your account, you can track how long you read or what you read. You can also earn badges, so you can earn online rewards for playing games or participating in activities. Activities like this one, our virtual story times. So what you can do is you can go on and you can say that you watched this story time. And at the end of the story time, I'll give you a code word, <gasps> a super secret code word. And if you watch this and you put your code word in, then you get points. Every story time you listen to, you get a raffle ticket, which is pretty awesome. So I'm glad you're listening today. And for every time you read 20 minutes at a time, it doesn't matter what kind of book you read. It doesn't matter how many books you read. If you read for 20 minutes, you get a badge. And if you read for 20 minutes, five days in one week, then you get a raffle ticket. You can track that all, on, all online or you can come to the library and we can give you a paper log so you can keep track and let us know. And then you can get a raffle ticket and you can earn a bike. It's pretty awesome. Those were donated by Charlie Lodge number 18. They're very generous to us and we're super excited that we get to give bikes this year. So that's all about our summer reading and this is the very first story time of summer reading. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it. But before we dive into our books, how do we start our story time? Do you remember? Do you know? I bet you do. We sing our hello song. So we're going to take our hand and put it against our head. We're going to stick our arm out just like that. And we're going to wave hello. And then we're going to say friends in sign language, which is a word I really like. So we're going to take our two fingers. And we're going to make them hug just like that. Can you do that? I bet you can. Then we're going to tap our wrist like we're wearing a watch because that means it's time in sign language. Then we're going to tap our mouths like we're talking. That means to say. So I'll sing it once. If you know it, that's great but I'll sing it twice so we can all practice together. Ready? Hands on our heads. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. How'd you do? Do you want to sing it again? Okay. Ready? Hand on our head. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job. You guys are such good singers. Thanks for singing our song with me. And then I like to think about happy things. Did you do something happy this weekend? What did you do? Hmm. What did I do? I made some cookies. <laughs> They're very big, chocolatey, delicious cookies. So I really like making those. And everybody I gave them to really liked them too. Baking always makes me happy. What did you do this weekend? That was fun. Think about it. So today for our story time, because fantasy, because Imagine Your Story is so broad, I thought I'd start with a couple of books, one from kind of all the, a little bit of the, a few of the sections that it can include. So I thought I'd start with this book, Mouse and Lion. And this is written by Rand Burkert and illustrated by Nancy Elkham Burkert. But this one is based on a fable. Do you know what a fable is? A fable is a short story and usually the characters are animals and it tells us a lesson at the end. There's a moral. It tries to teach us how to be a good person or about other people or about life. So let's see if we can learn what the moral of this story is. Mouse and Lion. And this one has very beautiful pictures. I like this book. And this was originally a fable. These, these, this group just illustrated it. Do we see a lion? And a mouse. 
Let's see what happens with them. One day, Mouse, hurrying home, lost his way on a rocky ridge. He was in such a rush, he scampered right over a tawny boulder that lay in his path. Was it a boulder or was it a lion? Oh no! What happened? Well, that boulder rolled over and caught him by the tail. It was King Lion in a bad mood. Scampering over my back while I was asleep? I'm not going to punish you, Runt. I'm going to eat you, said the lion. Mouse found barely enough courage to squeak. Sire, I took you for a mountain, honestly. Oh no. How does the lion sound? Not happy. Oh! oh no! Me? A mountain? Lion mused. That is possible. He swung Mouse to his whiskery jaws and he growled. Mouse spun slowly as he dangled. He dangled as he spun. He squinted into Lion's mouth, feeling his warm breath, noting his yellowed teeth. Oh, poor Mouse! Please let me go! Mouse cried. I promise to be loyal. I'm a brave mouse, sire. Put me down and I'll show you. Brave indeed, said Lion. He did a lazy half roll and Mouse found himself back on the ground. Show me how brave you are. What's he doing? Mouse spied a tall blade of grass and hurled himself toward it, shouting, Watch me! Take this! Hmm, what's he doing? And this! Did he break the blade of grass? Hmm. I see, said Lion. How many battles have you fought in, little mouse? Believe me, king. I try to avoid them. I'm quite small, you see. But I don't avoid mountains. I go right over them if they're in my way. Please let me go, Mouse begged. You might need me someday, in a pinch. Hmm. <sighs> Lion laughed and laughed. I need you? Good joke. But I like you, little mouse, he said. Go and climb more mountains, and don't brag about your bravery. King Lion gave his paw out to be kissed, but Mao meekly backed away. Bless you, sire, and goodbye. Was that nice of Lion? I guess that was good that he let the mouse go. The mouse tripped over his tail and rolled down the ridge and out of sight. Lion thought about him for a moment. He yawned, and Lion soon fell back to sleep. Hmm. hmm. This story takes place in Africa, which is very far from here and they have very unique treaties. A year passed, and Lion forgot all about his acquaintance. One afternoon, a warm breeze in the tall grass made him drowsy. Ah, yes, he thought. A wink under that old baobab tree. Just the thing. He padded into the leafy shade and stumbled straight into a trap set by hunters. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> Poor lion! A net dropped and twisted around him. The more he kicked and struggled, the more tightly the net bound him. It hurts, he cried, but nobody heard him. How do you think the lion's feeling? Is he scared? Oh, <gasps> There he is. At sunrise, Mouse popped out of his nest and he sniffed. He smelled lion and came running. No reason to be afraid of our king, he said to himself. No reason at all. The mouse found lion in a sorry tangle, a panting breath at the babobab tree. Oh, king, said Mouse, do you remember how you laughed at me? I can help you now. Little one, moaned lion, what can you do? Don't worry, my little teeth are just what you need. You tell me not to worry, Lion grunted. Good joke, little mouse. 
What do you think? Do you think Mouse can help him? Mouse set to it, nibbling the net and tickling Lion with his, with his paws as he scampered to and fro. Finally, Mouse declared, You are free, Lion! Sire, I mean. Oh, <gasps> he is free. Lion stood up, shook his mane, and roared! Wow. The mouse helped him. That was great, wasn't it? Then the lion crouched low to look into Mouse's eyes. Those little eyes seemed full of darting thoughts and things to do. You shall also be free, Mouse. I grant you liberty to climb every mountain in my kingdom, even mountains that snore and rumble in their sleep and roll over when you climb on them. Visit me again, my friend. I will, Mouse promised. Now please, take care. Men are everywhere with traps to snare us, large and small. Those mouse's friends? Lion watched until mouse vanished between the rocks and the grasses. Then he too bounded away until he reached the ridge where he could stretch and dream of bats and beetles, ants, cicadas, bright sunburns, and scampering mice. That day, such small things made the lion happy. the end. What do you think of that fable? What do you think the lesson is? Hmm. Well, the lion was very big and he didn't think the mouse was could be very helpful. He didn't think the mouse could be brave at all. But what happened at the end? Did the mouse help the lion? Yeah. So I think the lesson is that no matter how big we are or no matter how small, no matter what we think we can do, we can always help each other, right? I like that story a lot. Thanks for reading that fable with me. Then I thought we'd read a, fa a fairy tale or folk tale. And this one is Little Red Riding Hood. Have you ever read this one? You've probably heard this story before. And this one is illustrated by Paul Cadone. So let's see what happens in this fairy tale. Who's that? Is that Little Red? Once upon a time, there was a sweet little maiden who was loved by all who knew her. She was especially dear to her grandmother, who did not know how to make enough of the child. Once she gave her a little red velvet coat, and it was so becoming, she liked it so much that she would never wear anything else. So the girl got the name of Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Come here, little Red Riding Hood. Take this cake and bottle of wine to Grandmother. She is weak and ill, and they will do her good. Go quickly before it gets too hot. Don't loiter along the way, nor run, or you will fall and break the bottle, and there will be no wine for Grandmother. When you get there, don't forget to say, Good morning. I will do just as you tell me, little Red Riding Hood promised her mother. Oh no, let's find out. Her grandmother lived away in the wood, a good half hour walk from the village. When Little Red Riding Hood got to the wood, she met a wolf. <gasps> but Little Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked animal he was, so she was not afraid of him. Good morning, Little Red Riding Hood, he said. Good morning, wolf, she answered. Whither away so early, Little Red Riding Hood? Going to grandmother's, she answered. What have you got in your basket? he asked. Cake and wine. We baked yesterday, so I'm taking a cake to her. She wants something to make her well. Where does your grandmother live, Little Red Riding Hood? A good quarter of an hour farther into the wood. Her house stands under three big oak trees near a hedge of nut trees, which you must know, said Little Red Riding Hood. Oh no. Is that a good idea to tell him? <gasps> Let's find out. Ooh, how does he look? The wolf thought, 
This tender little creature will be a plump morsel. She will be nicer than that old woman. I must be cunning and snap up them both. <gasps> oh no. Are they walking together? Where are they going? Let's see. The wolf walked along with Little Red Riding Hood for a while. Then he said, Look at the pretty flowers, Little Red Riding Hood. Why don't you look around you? I don't believe you even hear the birds singing. You are as solemn as if you were going to school. Everything else is so happy out here in the woods. Hmm. What's she doing? She picking flowers? Let's see. Little Red Riding Hood raised her eyes, and when she saw the sunlight dancing through the trees and all the bright flowers, she thought, I'm sure Grandmother would be pleased if I took her a bunch of fresh flowers. It is still quite early. I shall have plenty of time to pick them. So Little Red left the path and wandered off among the trees to pick the flowers. Each time she picked one, she always saw another one prettier farther on. So she went deeper and deeper into the forest. <gasps> oh no. Is she being safe? I don't know. <gasps> Is that the wolf? <gasps> Is that the grandmother? Oh no! In the meantime, the wolf went straight off to the grandmother's cottage and knocked on the door. Who is there? asked the grandmother. It's Little Red Riding Hood bringing you a cake and some wine. Open the door, said the wolf. <gasps> Lift the latch, called out the grandmother. I'm too weak to get up. Oh no. <gasps> is that the wolf? Is he dressed as the grandmother? The wolf lifted the latch and the door sprang open. He went straight in and up to the bed, and without saying a word, he ate up the poor old woman. <gasps> then he put on her nightdress and cap and got into bed and drew up the curtains. Oh, no. Was that Little Red? Is she coming to see her grandmother? Little Red Riding Hood picked flowers till she could carry no more. And then she remembered her grandmother. <gasps> she was astonished when she got to the house to find the door open. And when she entered the room, everything seemed strange. Little Red Riding Hood felt quite frightened, but she did not know why. Generally, I like coming to see grandmother so much, she thought. Good morning, grandmother, she cried. But Little Red Riding Hood received no answer. Hmm. Then she went up to the bed and drew the curtains back. There lay her grandmother. But she had drawn up her cap down over her face, and she looked very odd. Oh, grandmother, what big ears you have, Little Red had said. The better to hear you with, my dear, said her grandmother. Grandmother, what big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to see you with, my dear. What big hands you have, grandmother. The better to catch hold of you with, my dear. But grandmother, said Little Red Riding Hood, what big teeth you have. <gasps> the better to eat you with, my dear. <gasps> oh, no. <gasps> Hardly had the wolf said this when he made a spring out of the bed and he swallowed poor Little Red Riding Hood. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, goodness. Who's that? A huntsman went out past the house and he thought, how loudly that old lady is snoring. I must see if she is okay in there. Hmm. <gasps> so the huntsman went into the house and up to the bed where he found the wolf fast asleep. Do I find you here, he said. Long enough have I sought you. So he was looking for the wolf. the wolf. The huntsman raised his gun to shoot when it just occurred to him that perhaps the wolf had eaten up the old lady and that she might still be saved. Hmm. I hope the huntsman can help. So he pulled the sleeping wolf's mouth wide open. The first thing he saw was a little red cloak. The little girl sprang out and cried, Oh, how frightened I was! It was so dark inside the wolf! 
Next, the old grandmother came out, alive. The wolf awoke and tried to spring up, but he was so frightened by the sight of the hunter that he fell down. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad they were rescued. They were all quite happy now. The huntsman took the wolf home. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine that Little Red Riding Hood had brought, and she soon felt quite strong. Little Red Riding Hood thought to herself, I will never again wander off into the forest as long as I live, when my mother forbids it. And that's the end. The end of Little Red Riding Hood. Have you heard that story before? Do you like that story? I think it tells us that we should listen to our moms and stay in the, on the path so we don't get lost. That's an interesting one. I'm glad the huntsman came to rescue them. For our last story, I'm reading one that was one of my favorites from childhood. And maybe you've read it too. I really like this one because this is what I was for Halloween. This one is called The Paper Bag Princess. It's written by Robert Munch. For Halloween, you'll see I put on a big paper bag. So some of you may have read this story already, but that's okay. Because I picked it because... Imagine your story encompasses fables and fairy tales and princesses and dragons. So I thought we'd try out this one. There's Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had expensive princess clothes. She was going to marry a prince named Ronald. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness! Unfortunately, a dragon smashed her castle, burned all of her clothes with his fiery breath, and carried off Prince Ronald. <gasps> There's Prince Ronald! Oh, no! There's our princess. Elizabeth decided to chase the dragon to get Ronald back. She looked everywhere for something to wear, but the only thing she could find that was not burnt was a paper bag. So she put on the paper bag and followed the dragon. He was easy to follow because he left the trail of burnt forests. Hmm. Finally, Elizabeth came to a cave with a large door that had a huge knocker on it. She took hold of the knocker and banged on the door. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, Well, a princess! I love to eat princesses, but I've already eaten a whole castle today. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. He slammed the door so fast that Elizabeth almost got her nose caught in it. Elizabeth grabbed the knocker and banged on the door again. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, Go away! I love to eat princesses, but I've already eaten a whole castle today. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. Wait! shouted Elizabeth. Is it true that you are the smartest and fiercest dragon in the whole world? Yes, said the dragon. Do you think he is? What's he doing? Is it true, said Elizabeth, that you can burn up ten forests with your fiery breath? Oh yes, said the dragon. And he took up a he, he took a huge deep breath. <sighs> And he breathed out so much fire that he burnt up 50 forests. Wow. Fantastic, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath and breathed out so much fire that he burnt up 100 forests. Magnificent, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath, but this time nothing came out. The dragon didn't even have enough fire left to cook a meatball. Oh no. So the dragon jumped up. Oh, I think he skipped a page. He did. Elizabeth said, Dragon, is it true that you can fly around the world in just 10 seconds? Why, yes, said the dragon. And he jumped up and flew all the way around the world in just 10 seconds. He was very tired when he got back. 
but Elizabeth shouted, Fantastic! Do it again! Does <gasps> he look very tired? I think I would be tired if I flew around the world. So the dragon jumped up and flew around the world in just 20 seconds. When he got back, he was too tired to talk, and he laid down and went straight to sleep. Elizabeth whispered very softly, Hey, dragon! But the dragon didn't move at all. She lifted up the dragon's ear and put her head right inside. She shouted as loud as she could, Hey, dragon! The dragon was so tired, he didn't even move. Elizabeth walked right over the dragon and opened the door to the cave. There was Prince Ronald. He looked at her and said, Elizabeth, you are a mess! You smell like ashes, your hair is all tangled, and you are wearing a dirty old paper bag. Come back when you are dressed like a real princess. <gasps> Was that very nice? Ronald, said Elizabeth, your clothes are really pretty and your hair is very neat. You look like a real prince, but you are a bum. They didn't get married after all. the end. What do you think of the paper bag princess? I like that story because she's very brave and she's pretty smart. She outsmarted the dragon. And Ronald didn't deserve her. He wasn't very nice. So I like that. She was a very brave princess. Thanks for reading that variety of stories with me. Next week we'll, we'll see some more fantasy things. Some more princes or princesses or dragons. Join me next Monday at 10.30 for story time. Oh, and the code word this week. If you've created your Read Squared account and you're ready to put in a code to earn 20 points is fantasy. Thanks for reading all those books with me. Before we say bye, we always say our goodbye song, right? Are you ready? We say goodbye like this. And it's just like our hello song. Ready? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thanks for reading with me. Have a fun day.